Joe, we're taking a look at congressional races across the country, and it's another record-breaking year for LGBTQ candidates running for office. 574 will appear on the ballot next Tuesday, November 3rd. That's up 33 percent from 2018. This year, an LGBTQ candidate ran in every state except for Alabama. Joining us now, Georgette Gomez. She's running for Congress in California's 53rd district. Gina Ortiz Jones, she's vying for a seat in Texas's 23rd congressional district. John Hoadley, he is running in Michigan's 6th district. Good morning and welcome to you all. Georgette, let me begin with you um, and tell us about your race, what's on the ballot, and what you're hearing most from voters right now. Yeah, well, thank you and good morning. Um, well, the race is uh, five more days to go. So right now we're concentrating and uh, contacting voters, making sure that, you know, they, they come out and vote and uh, introducing ourselves. There's still a lot of folks that are waiting for the day of to drop off their ballots. So we're encouraging people to be safe and uh, reaffirming that, you know, they can go out and drop off their ballots. And uh, there's a lot at stake. I mean, we have the presidential. There's a lot of local elections. Uh, the state of California has several ballots that are critical. Um, some will create future money to resolve housing, the housing crisis issues. And uh, we're working hard at the end of the day and making sure that we're contacting the voters and uh, that they know that I'm the right choice for them in the congressional 53rd district. We should point out that you're the president of the San Diego City Council. You grew up not too far from the Mexican border. So how strongly is immigration playing in your race right now, Georgette? Well, I mean, we have a lot of issues that are really critical. One, I mean, in, in, on top of mine is COVID. And uh, the fact of yeah. the matter is that right now, residents are hurting. There's a lot of uh, small businesses that are having to shut down their their doors because of the lack of action in D.C. Uh, there are still a lot of residents that are unemployed. They need support. They have to pay at the end of the month uh, their bills, and it's coming up. So it's stressful. Um, and yes, we're right at the border. I'm a daughter of immigrant parents, first generation uh, Mexican immigrants that came into this country, and they fought very hard. And uh, we have an administration that is attacking the immigrant community that is separating children from their parents and families. So there's a lot that we have to do and really um, moving forward with a more human focus and validating the importance that the immigrant community has brought to this country and continues to bring to this country. I mean, a lot of our immigrant communities are in the they're frontline workers and they're keeping this country alive and we need to respond in a more humane way than what we're seeing right now. Gina, let's move to the state of Texas. You served as a captain in the United States Air Force deployed to Iraq. Um, a lot of people are talking right now, perhaps wishfully, about Texas becoming a swing state in less than a week from now. Some people thought it was maybe four or eight years away. But what are you seeing in your race in the 23rd district? Hi, good morning. Yes, I'm a first generation American, honored to uh, have lived the American dream. But I also worked for almost 15 years uh, working to protect our economic and national security. And I started off as an intelligence officer in the Air Force, and I served under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So equality is absolutely on the ballot. Uh, and no one should be surprised about the turnout here in Texas. You know, we're the most uninsured state in the country, and it's our indicted in, uh, attorney general uh, that is in lockstep with this administration to take away people's health care during a pandemic. And my opponent is lockstep with these folks. So we deserve better. We can have better. Um, and folks know that health care is on the ballot. So, John, you're running in Michigan's 6th District. It's a fascinating district in that it's, it's one of those that went for Barack Obama and then went for Donald Trump. It's a traditionally conservative district, but you think health care is going to make the difference? Uh, tell us about it. Tell us about the race. Yeah, healthcare is on the ballot, and people in Southwest Michigan know it. You know, my opponent voted 12 times to take away coverage for people with pre existing conditions, and he's trying to get everybody to forget about his actual voting record. He cozied up to Donald Trump uh, at the early part of the administration, and now he wants everybody to try to forget about it. But the reality is that this is a swing part of the state. It supported Barack Obama. 
Um, it just barely went for Mitt Romney and folks voted for Trump, but not in overwhelming numbers. So this is a part where people are looking to see some change. And after 34 years in office, uh, that we're hearing from people all across the district that, you know, maybe now is a good time to try something else. What's your impression, John, uh, more broadly of what's going on in the state of Michigan? Uh, obviously, the Biden campaign thinks and hopes it will flip that state and begin a sweep across the, the upper Midwest there that'll get him the nomination. But what's going on in the ground in your state? The president spent a lot of time there still railing against the governor. Hey, this is why I remind everybody, you can't let your foot off the gas for a moment when it comes to Michigan. You know, that's why your support, you know, for our candidates and for folks up and down the ticket make a huge difference because there's a lot of folks who are still deciding. They feel like their voices haven't been heard because, you know, the same people have been there for so long and they're wondering, are you ever going to actually fight for my family? And uh, we're seeing that turn the corner. We see a lot of people have significant enthusiasm for this election. But now the question is going to be, will everybody get to the polls? And that's why campaigns are working hard over the next five days, making sure people turn in their ballot by hand or make a plan to vote on Election Day. Gina, as you look at your own race in the 23rd district and sort of extrapolate out on Texas, do you believe the hopes of some Democrats that even the state of Texas could flip and turn blue this time? Absolutely. Again, we, we're seeing record turnout um, because we know we deserve better. Right. Again, we've got leaders that are working to take away people's health care during a pandemic and an economic crisis. Right. We should be getting working families more help and focused on making sure our, our economy is as inclusive as, as possible. And that's why it's so important uh, that we are make, making the voter contact, getting folks out to the polls, have a plan. You know, we've got two days left of early voting here in Texas and folks are excited about what's possible. Um, and that starts with prioritizing the needs of working families. And that starts with making sure they have access to quality, affordable health care. We will find out how it all turns out in just five days. Georgette Gomez, Gina Ortiz Jones, and John Hoadley. Thanks all so much for being with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.